Refreshing databases at the speed required by the software team can take hours or even days, hold up the development cycle, and use large amounts of disk space. With SQL Clone, databases which hold terabytes of data can be copied in just seconds using megabytes of disk space. Let me show you. Here, I have opened the SQL Clone server where we create and manage clones. Before we can start creating clones, we first need to create a data image. This is the one time we need to create a full copy of the database as the data image holds the source data that clones will reference. The data image can be created from a SQL backup, .bac or .sqb format, or directly from a SQL Server connection. Start by selecting the SQL Server instance, where the database you want to clone is located, and then select the database you wish to clone. Select a location where you would like the image to be stored. This needs to be a place that can be seen by all the locations you want to deliver the clones to. So somewhere like a Windows file share on the same local area network would be fine. Give the image a name and click Create Image. This is the one time we're creating a full copy of the database, so it will take about as long as a backup or restore, and will take up about the same amount of disk space. This isolates us though from the source, so subsequent operations will have no impact on the original database's performance. Once the data image is complete, it is a standalone copy of the database at a point in time, and it's immutable, meaning it can't be edited or manipulated. Right now I'm using a small database so the image doesn't take too long to create, but creating and managing images in clones can also be automated using PowerShell. Now our data image is ready, we can go ahead and create our clones. For this demonstration I'm actually going to use a much bigger image which I had created previously. Select the destination you wish to deliver the clone to, give the clone a name, and click Create. This takes seconds and will use just tens of megabytes of local disk space, whatever the size of the original database. We can see that although the image was 113 gigabytes, the clone is just 73 megabytes. If we look inside SQL Server Management Studio, we can see the new clone we just created. SQL Server itself is unaware that the clone is only using a few megabytes of data locally, and that it is referencing data stored remotely in the image. It is read as though it were a full database. From the SQL Clone dashboard, we can view and manage all the images and clones we have created. Within the Settings section, we can also set permissions to control who can create images and clones. With SQL Clone, teams can work in isolated environments on their local workstations, using up-to-date and accurate data to develop, test and fix code. Download your 14-day trial today at redgate.com slash SQLClone.